It is a unique event, the Le Mans 24-hour race. And uh, we're now very much in the closing stages. Just over 22 minutes to go. The atmosphere is electric as the cars come across the line now to get the 24 hours. The start of the race saw the two British drivers, Jamie Davis and Alan McNish, lead the field away to begin 24 hours of racing. Driving the Johnny Herbert car, Davies led the early laps and eased away from McNish, who was trying to use less fuel. In the GTS class, the two pro-drive Ferraris, one of them to be driven by McRae, were leading the Corvettes. The first major drama came at around 6pm when both McNish and Leto went off on oil, and the Ferrari lying second also spun. McNish and Leto managed to get their cars back to the pits, but there was an awful lot of work to do for the mechanics. Johnny Herbert thus enjoyed an advantage of a round and lap over the japanese entered Team Go Audi as darkness fell, and we were into classic Le Mans territory. Headlights, glowing brake discs, and race engines reverberating through the trees. Johnny Connell was out of luck, suffering one of the many punctures that have afflicted cars this weekend. Meanwhile, Colin McRae's car went off in the hands of Darren Turner, following a lengthy stop for a clutch change. In GTS, the number 64 Corvette was leading, but contact with the overall leader put Jan Magnussen into the wall and lost the Americans their advantage to the Ferrari of Thomas Eng, Peter Cox and Alain Menu. The early hours of the morning are when the fatigue sets in and for the lads of the pit garages every nook and cranny was adopted as a possible place to get some rest but none was needed for the hardiest spectators. The McNish car was still on the track but the Scot had been told not to race leaving the task to Pierre Kaffer and Frank Beeler. The early hours also saw the end of the Zytec challenge. The V8 engine cried enough and the team's first attempt at a 24-hour run was over. But as the saying goes, there's no smoke without fire and that was provided by the glowing brake discs of the number 61 Ferrari in pit lane. So the short summer night continued, and while a few cars retired, the dramas were minimal, allowing the mechanics a chance to rest. Johnny Herbert's car led as the sun began to rise, but for team boss and driver Martin Short, things took a turn for the worse as he was hit by Sebastian Bourdais. Johnny Herbert brought the lead car in at 7am, but it was a longer stop than hoped for. While Frank Beeler had a spin, the Velox team had to work on the rear suspension of the number 88 car, allowing the Team Go entry to close the gap and go ahead in the 24-hour race. Martin Short's race was to come to an end when broken suspension pitched him off the road at over 160 miles an hour. And even the experienced Emanuele Pirro was making mistakes in his battle for third position with the French-built Pescarolo. This gravelly moment for that Pescarolo and an alternator problem allowed the champion Audi to move up into third despite Pirro's off. Up front, the number five car was now leading just over a lap ahead of Jamie Davis. Jamie was pushing hard, perhaps a little bit too hard. He spun, but was able to continue. In GTS, the number 66 Ferrari had a five-lap lead, but a puncture and subsequent damage to the front end allowed the Corvettes of Gavin, Beretta and Magnussen to close up and come out ahead at the next round of stops. And as if to prove the race could still have a sting, race leader Ronaldo Capello suffered a brief refueling fire. But the marshals were quickly on hand, and the car remains the in the lead. The race started in a blaze of noise and colour, but drama wasn't far away. The much-fancied Audis of McNish and JJ Leto in the tyre wall after a high speed off. Unbelievably, both cars got back to the pits and back in the race. But on doctor's orders, McNish could take no further part. But we're in for a grandstand finish. Dane Tom Christensen stands on the brink of a record equaling sixth victory. But Johnny Herbert, Jamie Davis and Guy Smith are in the mood to spoil the party. They're second with an hour and a half to go. Well, the TVR also in the pits at the moment, and it's good to see both TVRs still running. The GT class might have been dominated uh, by Porsche over the last few years, but the British sports car industry has been fighting back this year with the two TVR Tuscans and indeed the Morgan Aero 8 taking on the challenge of the 24-hour race. We were here in 2002, we had a fantastic time with the crowd, we ran for 18 hours and then we had an engine blow. So we're back hopefully to, um, to finish the business. Last time we did 56 hours without any sleep. Basically just adrenaline from the crowd, it just keeps you going. Uh, at the end of it you just collapse almost, but it's a great feeling and they really are brilliant to see all the, all the English supporters giving you a real good cheer on. TVR and Morgan are another, uh, are much smaller organisations obviously. Um, and the budget show, let's be fair about it, the, the sort of budget that 
we're running two cars on wouldn't have paid for the food that Bentley had last year. Um, I know I tried some of it. Very good, it was too. I had a uh, chat with Hugh Chamberlain from CVR last night. We get on absolutely fine. We really help each other in the pits here. We're always helping each other, borrowing tools and so on. But of course, once the race starts, different situation. You know, he's, he's pushing very hard at the moment. Uh, it's going to be tough for us, but, um, you know, this, this is Le Mans 24 hours and anything can happen. After 24 hours almost of racing, to be this close, it's incredible. Yeah, I mean, we always knew it was going to be close. We, we expected maybe uh, a couple more other Audis up there, but uh, I think uh, the, the race that we're putting on isn't disappointing anybody, so uh, it's going to go down to the wire. Have you been very pleased with your performance? Have you, have you gone well here? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, uh, we, our car was difficult in the night. We had some, uh, some problems with the uh, suspension during the night, which made it difficult to drive, and uh, we were able to fix that, but uh, that's what lost us the lead. So uh, the car's going fast. Just see if Johnny can catch him up. It's going to go right down to the wire. Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, you know, he's pushing as hard as he can. That's all he can do. Um, it's just going to be, uh, be a close one. Okay, well, it's down to Johnny. There's a little bit of pressure there for him. Yeah, I mean, you know, Johnny's got the you know, most experience in the team. You know, if anybody can do it, he can do it. So, uh, fingers crossed. It's going to be absolutely fantastic, isn't it? What an atmosphere. And if you could win here again, it will be absolutely superb. Yeah, I mean, it'd be fantastic. I mean, uh, not just for myself, but for the whole team. But, uh, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. Thanks very much. I have to say I feel really sorry for them because this is a big physical race and it's emotionally very tiring as well. And so to have two drivers, you know, doing three hours at a time, that's extremely hard work. I'm sure they'll sleep well tonight. And this is Johnny pushing as hard as he can, but how hard can he push, Tiff? I think right to the edge. He's a few laps ahead of the third place. It looks like something going to happen to three. It's amazing that champion car that was in the back of Alan's car 20-odd uh, hours ago is... Uh, is, is, is right back up to third place. We've got a car off the road now. We're all looking at monitors because things are Can't happening. Can't quite see who it is, but the and gap is... Like it's one of the, uh, the domes that the race for Holland. Could be Justin Wilson's car or Jan Lammers' car. One of those two is in the barriers at the moment. There's just under one hour to go then to the end of the 2004 running of this race. But what is going to happen over that final hour? With the pit stop that's just been made by Seiji Ara in the lead car, the Team Go car, it means that Johnny Herbert is now just 45 seconds behind. But Johnny will have to make at least one and possibly two more stops to make it through to the end of the race. On the tires, but I know a number of drivers who tried it this morning ended up making mistakes and getting into trouble. I think four stints is too much for a set of tyres around here. Uh, the wear and tear is uh, just so that I think three stints, you've still got enough grip at the end of that run. And uh, I think, that, as you just said, Ben, a lot of people are finding out that four is a little bit too much. They're not having the grip level they need, and they're just popping off the road. And they are now looking at winning the 2004 24-hour race here at Le Mans. They come out of the final corner, and the checkered flag is waved for Seiji Ara. Tom Christensen takes his sixth win at Le Mans. He equals the record of the most successful driver here, Jackie X. He's done it in fewer events, in just eight entries to the event. He's won it six times. It is an absolutely stunning record. Ronaldo Capello earns his second Le Mans victory as well. But for Seiji Ara, this is a moment to savour, to remember for the rest of his life but you have to feel for Johnny Herbert. He drove his heart out. He has to settle for second. Interesting with Derek, I think. I mean, nowadays, you see, it's always three drivers per car. You, is that because it's a tougher race with a higher G-force, or would you like to have had a third driver? I'll tell you what they're looking at. I'm a lot better shape than I am. <laughs> I was, but I was with two drivers. There must have been a reason for it, but I think, you know, when it changed in the mid-80s, with the fact that the cars with the Group C Porsches and the cars and the Jags and whatever you drove, they had such ground effect. They stuck so much. These cars stick in the corner, but it's a different sort of grip. I don't think we're going any faster today than they were than we were then in the corner. And look what it means for those drivers. As far as the eye can see, people on the track, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, there's a number of nationalities, a number of flags waved there. You mix and mingle. You, we've obviously we know the British flags more, but there's Danish flags out there, Japanese flags, and all sorts. French, even Belgian, Russian, Spanish, I'm Portuguese sure. drivers, Russian drivers. As a British weekend, how would you see it, Tiff? Not a good omen, really, I suppose. And uh, let's go through the results for you. Here it is. The Team Go Audi uh, wins by 41 seconds, it is, in the end. Extremely close, but what a great uh, drive it was in the end. 
uh, from Ara taking it home and Christensen gets his sixth Le Mans victory. The team Velox Audi in second of Davis, Herbert and Smith, that uh, pure uh, British team then. The champion Audi coming in third and then the French car of the Pescarolo Judd uh, coming in next. And there you can see in sixth place the first of the GTS cars um, in fifth of course. Uh, it was Alan McNish's car, uh, but of course Alan played a very small part in events this weekend after that uh, very, very nasty crash after just a couple of hours. But look at those scenes. That is what Le Mans is all about, and this is the moment that everybody has been waiting for. All the drivers, those 48 cars that started this race, now all finished, and those 250,000 fans have all swarmed around the pit lane and to of course towards that checkered flag and the podium area let's go back to our commentary team then mark blundell and ben thanks very much angus it is a, a wonderful sight it really is as we look out of our commentary box it's just the, the throng of the crowd of all people moving down towards that podium area that haven't already made it down there you can see people still heading uh, along the start finish straight down towards the podium and mark you were there last year of course second place for bentley you've also been there on the top step but it, it is something very special it, it's an amazing feeling and the combination of the emotion and the, the fact that you're tired uh, it really overcomes everybody who's involved in the whole team the drivers there's a great deal of camaraderie between the guys who are sharing that car for a long period of time they've got to know each other over several months before this event with all the testing all the hard work you feel for all the mechanics they've also been doing an incredible job but to stand up there and have some 50 60 thousand people underneath you especially when you start to see those union jacks it's incredible you never never will forget it and as Derek said that they've sort of watched you through that whole 24-hour period they've lived the race with you haven't they it's not you feel so connected to them it's exactly that I mean they've been there they've watched every single move a lot of the people will go there will have their favorite car their favorite driver you know there's been the parade in town earlier during the week they've come to the race now and they've, they've lived it they've been there with you and they've felt all the emotions whether it's been high or low I know that what makes them all special for so many people is that contact they have with the stars and they've got that contact here as out onto the podium come uh, the Audi drivers with Emanuele Piro leading that uh, group out Marco Verna and JJ Leto the third place car of champion racing JJ of course uh, former winner of the event Emanuele Piro who had, uh, was part of that amazing team that won three on the trot with uh, Frank Bieler and Tom Christensen. But he hasn't been able to add to it on this occasion. Perhaps he wasn't in the right car, whatever. Whichever way you look at it, he's had a tremendous success record here at Le Mans in the past. Marco Verna just standing there in the middle. But now we're waiting for the second place entries and they're going to get a massive cheer. The British team. It's Johnny Herbert, Guy Smith and Jamie Davis. And just listen to that response. <laughs> and Johnny, he's always smiling, isn't he? Even when he must be disappointed. Uh, of course there would be a tinge of disappointment. He, he's been wanting to win the event again for a lot of time, you know, several years. Uh, but he will still be proud. He'll still be justified of the second position. And yes, he's always got a smile on his face because hopefully he knows there's another turn next year. But it's time now for the three winners to come out and for the new record man, the record equaler, to also come out on the podium and I just know they're going to get a fantastic reception. They've driven hard for 24 hours and they've come away with the prize. Seiji Ara is the first to step forth. Tom Christensen and Ronaldo Capello. In fact, I think we're waiting a moment for Tom to come out. Yeah, there he is. Oh, that's fantastic. The six times winner of Le Mans. And the first thing he does is congratulate everybody else. Well, they call him Super Tom. That's what everybody calls him. Justified now six times. A magnificent team. And a great day for Denmark, too, because not only a Danish winner overall, equaling the record of the Belgian Jackie X, but we had a Danish winner in that uh, class winning car in GTS, the Chevrolet Corvette, shared with Oliver Gavin in the shape of Jan Magnussen.
Voilà l'hymne du Japon, l'honneur de la The Japanese du, uh, national anthem played out because uh, the team go entry, the Japanese entry, the winner here at Le, Le Mans. And a, a key figure up there on the podium, Dr. Wolfgang Ulrich, the mastermind really of the Audi attack over the past six years here at Le Mans. Uh, and what a story that's been, Mark. Yeah, he's the motorsport director of Audi. Um, he basically has put this whole package together for Audi to go racing and produce, uh, produce some significant results. Uh, a very proud man at this moment in time. But this guy here, for me, I think he's done a, an outstanding job. The amount of pressure on his shoulders to finish off the race, and knowing that he's got somebody like Johnny Herbert behind him on the race circuit, and knowing that it meant so much to not only him, but his teammates. Fantastic. <laughs> Look at those trophies held aloft with great pride. You can see Katamichi Go, the team owner, receiving his trophy just a moment before that. Um, what a very special moment it must be for him too. This team that's been coming to Le Mans over the last few years, taking on the might of the European sports car teams, the might of the American sports car teams. Everyone comes to Le Mans to try and win it. It takes a great deal to do so, and these guys have now done it for him. <laughs> And I think there's some indicator there of help of Tom saying to Seiji that must have been a bit scary to, in the last stages. The second place finishes and uh, fantastic effort by the Brits. Jamie Davis nearest the camera there, Guy Smith in the middle and Johnny Herbert on the far side as ever getting a fantastic reception. Yeah, it's a great feeling, it's something that you soak up and uh, you know these guys now are very very tired but if they keep to tradition like we did last year there's probably a nice big fry up waiting for them back in the paddock. Sounds like a good idea. And the third place finishes there. JJ Leto on the far side, Marco Werner in the middle. And the Italian Emanuele Piro on the left hand side. Not the win on this occasion. That oil slick caught them out. And I have to say it must have been a very scary accident. They dropped all the way down to 41st position after that accident. And there they are celebrating a podium finish. That really is quite an achievement. So king of the comebacks, JJ Leto. Marco Werner uh, in that champion racing car. Johnny Herbert, what is he doing with that on his hat? But uh, always the joker. But he's had a great time here at Le Mans. But the headlines are all about uh, Tom Christensen matching the record of Jackie Hicks and the superb driving of Seiji Ara and Dindo Capello to back him up for the win in the 2004 event.